Good day to all of you and welcome to this introductory video on the course Geoenvironmental Engineering. If you look at this uh, photograph, you will see a huge garbage dump about 30 to 40 meters high with some black liquid called leachate at the base. This is what inspired me to work in the area of geoenvironmental engineering. This course titled Geoenvironmental Engineering and in some institutions it is also called Environmental Geotechnology. It deals with landfills, slurry ponds and contaminated sites. We will be spending 42 lectures on this topic and I will be your course instructor Professor Manoj Datta from IIT Delhi. This course is useful for all those who are invi involved in environmental science and engineering, geotechnical engineering and soil sciences, pollution control board and regulatory authorities, central and state ministries of environment, urban development, municipal corporations and urban local bodies, manufacturing industries and industrial development corporations, waste management industries, operators and NGOs, groundwater and mining authorities and industries, designers, consultants and researchers and others. We will ask you four questions and let us see if you are comfortable with these in answering these four questions. Are you aware of what is subsurface contamination and how it is caused? Are you aware of how we can prevent subsurface contamination? How do we detect and monitor subsurface contamination? And finally, how do we rehabilitate or remediate contaminated sites? So if you know the answers to all these questions and if you know the engineering solutions, then this course is not for you. But if you find that most of the questions asked are something which you are not aware of, then I encourage you to go through this course. I come back to the original slide where we looked at this thick dark colored leachate at the base of a garbage dump. What normally happens is that this dark colored leachate goes into the soil and contaminates it. It goes further into the groundwater and contaminates it and finally the contaminated groundwater reaches a drinking water well and it affects human health. There are many sources of subsurface contamination including the solid waste which we just saw, buried drums, buried pipelines and sewer lines, ponds of wastewater, underground storage tanks and others. All of them are contaminating the subsurface environment. In this course, our learning objectives will be to learn about concepts and principles of subsurface contamination. The bulk of the course will focus on planning, design and construction of landfills for municipal solid waste and hazardous waste as well as design and construction of slurry ponds of coal ash and mine tailings and other slurry deposits. We will look at rehabilitation of old waste dumps, detection and monitoring of subsurface contamination. We will look at what can we do at sites which are already contaminated with waste, what are the control and remedial measures we can take and what is the geotechnical reuse of waste materials. This is an example of a new hazardous waste landfill being, con being constructed in which hazardous waste will be stored. However, it is designed in an engineering uh, and scientific way such that it has a liner which prevents the leachate from going to the groundwater and here we can see the liner, the waste with a, with a daily soil cover and a final cover. And this is the way the landfill is covered at the end and you have a green top with gas collection system. We also collect the leachate which is generated inside the waste dump and you can see this but this time the leachate is sent to a treatment plant and does not go into the soil below or into the groundwater. Let me take another example. This is another big garbage dump at a mega city in India. This dump was remediated by making the slopes, degrading the slopes and making them stable and providing a final cover system so that the rainwater would not go into the dump to create leachate and this is what it looks like today. We are also extracting gas from this waste dump to generate uh, power. 
The other types of waste with which we have to deal on the ground are slurry deposited waste. This is an industrial waste which, which has been de deposited in the form of a slurry on soil, on ground. Uh, this is a lot of coal ash being deposited in a pond. So these are the slurry pipelines that will bring in the coal ash. This is the ash, that is the ponded water. These are some mine tailings or mine powder which comes in in the form of a slurry behind a large dam. So we are also going to look at the design of uh, tailings dams and ash pond dikes for the purpose of uh, storage of slurry and we have to prevent their failure in the long term. Other cases which we will see will relate to disposal of uh, industrial process liquid in underground storage tanks or industrial sludge on ground and cases of uh, contamination of surface water, the soil and the groundwater and all this will be covered in this course. So how much time will we spend on different topics? We will spend five lectures on introduction, soil waste interaction and integrated management. Bulk of the course, 20 lectures will be on municipal solid waste and hazardous waste landfills. We will look at planning, design, what kind of liners and covers are used, how leachate is collected, how gas is collected and how slope stability is um, accomplished and how we monitor that these landfills do not leak. We will also spend some time on rehabilitation of old dumps. The second major focus will be on slurry ponds. We will be doing planning design incremental raising of the dikes and dams of slurry points. We will look at stability aspects and we will also look at the geotechnical properties of coal ash and mine tailings. We will be spending 10 lectures on this. Other than these, we will spend four lectures on detection, control and remedial measures at contaminated sites, sites in which waste has been disposed of in the past and we will also look at uh, how can we reuse some of the waste. Uh, for geotechnical applications as in earthworks or filling low-lying areas and also we will as we go along in the course we will look at regulations in India and overseas and we will also do some case studies. When you finish this course you will have many new capabilities. You can be a part of a design team in an environmental consultant's office so with the new knowledge that you acquire here in this course you will be able to do uh, design work relating to landfills and slurry ponds. You can be a part of an evaluation team for a regulatory authority. If a regulatory authority is monitoring a landfill, you can be a part of the uh, team which goes and uh, does the monitoring program, looks at the leachate and the landfill gas and other uh, emissions from landfills and uh, slurry ponds. You can be a project team leader for executing a project. That means for designing, uh, constructing and operating a landfill or a slurry pond. You should be, with the knowledge gained this, in this course, very easily be able to refer to the latest codes, whether it's European practice or American practice or Indian practice. Look at the various codes, guidelines and manuals so that in your designs you can incorporate the best global practices uh, for uh, landfills, slurry ponds and other waste disposal facilities. You will also be equipped to undertake analysis of failures. I mean if there is a landfill failure or a slurry pond failure, you will be equipped how to analyze the failures and also take remedial action for stabilizing these failures and also take remedial action at contaminated sites to prevent further spread of contamination from these sites. And finally, uh, you will be able to keep abreast of the latest R&D findings. You will be able to go to the journals and the conferences, the latest journals and conferences and read articles of what is happening in this area and understand these articles. And you will be able to use the R&D findings to arrive at state of the art solutions for your problems. So in the end, Sitting through this four, 42 lectures, you will be able to acquire these new capabilities. So I would like to say that you are embarking on a voyage of discovery. Enjoy your voyage, enjoy your journey, happy learning. And I hope that uh, you will really gain some new insights into the area of geoenvironmental engineering or environmental geotechnology as it is often called. Thank you and all the best.